Here we go. Here's a little sneak peek at what we are designing today. We have our concrete silo factory. So let's get started. All right, to start this concrete silo, we are going to try to do a little bit of a circle, so ish. It's not really gonna be a circle. It's gonna be flat edges because it's a little small to make it into a circle, or at least for what I've figured out how to make circles so far. So let's start with that door right there. Then we need a wall on the other side. And we're going half a foundation in from the edges. So we're gonna have three foundations wide on each side here. Now we just need the conveyor wall on the other sides of this somewhat circle right there. And then we are going to have to get our walls attached between there, which takes a little bit of a trick. Let's go ahead and get some foundations put down like so. Like that. Okay. That thing sounds like a freaking jet now. I don't remember ever hearing it before, but I hear it every time it flies over now. Does anyone else remember that not sounding so loud? Or am I just crazy? Oh, this one didn't get put in the right spot. There we go. All right. Now, in order to get these where we need them to go, we have to use our road barrier trick. So, nice flat spot, one, two, three, to give us a 45 degree angle. Zoop to two, and then we're gonna do the same thing from here. One, two, three, for the nice 45 degree angle. Zoop two, and there we go. And then we just attach to that second one on both of those. And our foundations are going to overlap a little bit because we are going more than nine, uh, more than eight meters across here. In fact, if we take a painted beam, we can see that it is 11.3 meters that we need to go. So that's why we got to overlap those foundations. That way our wall can overlap and look appropriate. I'm not going to make you watch me do every single one of these, but I'm going to run through and do all of these real quick and be right back. There we go. Now that we got all of those foundations in place, we can actually set our walls. In order to get the walls in the appropriate spot, we are first going to need to go up just one more than what we actually need on both of those. And then we delete all four of those segments there. Then we can go in and attach our basic wall right to where it's needed, and then they overlap perfectly, so you can't even really tell. And there we have it. Now that all the walls are up, we can get rid of these foundations as they were just intended to be temporary to help us build those walls. All right. Perfect. Now the next part is simply adding the constructor that is going to get the um, limestone in. And we're just going to put that nice and center. Then on the output side, we are going to put a merger that is going to go straight out to there. We'll give it a little bit of space. And on the input side, we need a splitter. And again, give it just a little bit of space before the machine. Right there. Perfect. Now to give it a little architectural design here, I think I'm gonna use the full frame window. So that's going to chop this side up nicely just attached to the top of each of those, and then the overlap actually gives us a three-panel window, with the middle section being a little bit larger than the outside two sections. I like that. We're going to do that on each of these sides here. There we go. And then we're just going to do a normal steel wall on each of the sides. Just like that. Now let's go inside. 
and set this to concrete, which is going to take in 45 limestone per minute and put out 15 concrete per minute. Which really means we don't need... Did I not center? Oops, I did not center this. Alright, let's get that constructor actually center. Like that. There we go. Now it's centered. Okay. So since these are never going to go over 45 input per minute, because I'm not going to uh, overclock them, we can get away with just using an MK1 belt to fill it. Now the other thing that we want, I think, is just a 1 meter foundation around the top of those or a one meter wall around the top of those so that we can get our foundation in here without clipping into these things. So let's do the one meter wall. Right there. Like so. Okay. And let's put in power right above uh, not right above, but on the wall with the door, I think. That double wall outlet. Put it right here. And connect the power. And that's where all of our power can come from outside. Now for the next floor... I think we just need those. I think I'm going to go with just that for the interior design. And we're going to put a ladder onto a wall in another spot. We'll, we'll figure out the rest of the design shortly. Maybe the ladder will run up, run up the window. I'd be okay with that. Here I go saying that I'm going to put off that design aspect a little bit, and then I just go into it anyway. There we go. Perfect. Oops. I was thinking that was sections for some reason. Alright, now... What we are going to do to save us a little bit of time here is we are going to save this as a temporary blueprint. And then simply climb up top here and put in two more floors of our temporary blueprint. However, going to need to change the inputs. That's fine. This still saves a bunch of time. There we go. Now we don't need a door there. We don't need a door here. So let's go ahead and change those with just solid walls. We only need the one door at the bottom. And then our electric lines, we just connect here and here. And now all three machines are going to get power as soon as we connect it anywhere on that line. Now we can run our ladder all the way up to the top. Right there. Oh, I guess we can't run it all the way to the top. It's got to be multiple parts to do that. Like that. Actually, it doesn't need to go up out there. Perfect. Now, I am going to put temporary foundations down 
on both sides here. Just so I can rearrange those splitters and mergers as needed. And this is a merger which will be sending stuff down. Oh, oh, I jumped all the way off. We can go ahead and delete all of those, not the bottom ones. The bottom ones are oriented properly. And we'll delete those as well. There we go. Now we just need... I always go to organization instead of logistics. It's annoying. The conveyor merger to be on the output. Which side is the output? That's the output. So this top one is going to take in from the machine and spit out to the right, which is going to go down and take in from the machine and spit out to the left, because it's going to also take in from the right. And then it is going to be connected down there to merge them all together to go out the wall. And these are also not necessary in those spots. So maybe I'll do glass there. We'll see what it looks like from the outside. And they're only going to be spitting out 15, so at most we're going to have 45 coming out, so we can just use MK1 belts and lifts through this entire process. Take out those foundations. And let's get those lifts on there. Conveyor lift tier 1. There we go. Whoops! The dangers of working uh, with not a floor underneath you. <laughs> there we go. So now everything that comes out of those is going to be merged all the way down here and sent out through that spot on an MK1 belt because it's only going to be 45. Now coming in, we are going to have 120. So we're going to need at least an MK2 belt, but I'm just going to do MK3 because no one likes to do MK2 belts. They're just a pain in the butt because of those iron reinforced iron plates. I'd rather I'd rather use steel just like most people. Go up to the third floor here. Boom. And now we need our input splitters. We're going to go the same side like that. And like that. Let me take out our foundations. I always do that. That's getting annoying. All right. The very top goes down to here. And the bottom. Wait, did I put that in the right spot? Yeah, in... Out, okay, yeah. I just confused myself for a second. There we go. So now every machine is going to get... It's 45 concrete in. Or 45 limestone in, I should say. Oh, that's the problem. I thought it looked funny. I went up to the third floor. Okay. Alright, let's get our foundation back because I messed up. 
And then we need our splitter again, right here. And going into the machine only needs to be an MK1. Which means I really only need an MK1 coming up from this one. Could have gotten away with an MK1 on a lower one as well. But we're going to keep those MK3. No, probably wouldn't have gotten away with, a low, with an MK1 on that. Because that's only going to take in 45, which would still be over 60 going up to the next one. So there we have it. I'm going to do that in MK3, just, just to keep everything looking the same over there. So now we have everything attached, all the way up, all the way down. So that will take in... Oh, those are not set. I thought they would be. Oh, I deleted it and moved it, that's right. So let's get these set real quick, otherwise that's going to be a whole lot of nothing doing anything. And let's get outside to see what this all looks like from out here. Perfect. A nice concrete silo. Uh, 